Welcome to the Taking the Lead podcast, where we empower people to be unstoppable. I'm Christina Hepner with my co-host, Leslie Hoskins, and we actually are recording on campus today because we're catching up with a client that we talked to not too long ago who is here getting a guide dog. Yes, today Walker Jones is with us again on campus and getting his first guide dog. So Walker, thank you so much for joining us and taking the time out of what we know is a very, very busy day to catch up. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm glad you guys got me back again. Plus you get me out of a little bit of work. (laughs) <laughs> we'll probably have to do today anyway. So. <laughs> yes. So when we last talked to you on the podcast, um, you had just put in your interview, and I think a few days after we recorded, you found out you were coming to get your guide dog. So yeah. what has it been like so far? Tell us one first about your guide dog and how has it been going? It's been going pretty good. It's probably the least I've used my cane since I started using it because I've really not used it all the whole time I've been here but I just don't like using the cane and working with Loki at the same time. But um, it's been great. Loki's a great dog. He's always making me laugh. He's always really close to me right now. He's under my legs. I don't know. He's just a goofy dog, and I love him. <laughs> what kind of dog is Loki? Loki is a lab golden cross, and he's 64 pounds. And I think, oh, my gosh, there's a slobber all over me. <laughs> Walker's uh, wiping off (laughs) slobber from his uh, sweatshirt from Loki, which is a fun little thing we don't talk about. Also, not something you experience with a cane. No. Canes don't slobber on you. Yes. We hope not. He is a huge dog. He is, and he is beautiful. So how was it going? So Okay, so yeah, last time we talked to you, you were just approved for a guide dog, and then a couple days later, you found out your class dates and, like, you were coming in. Yeah. So, so when you got here, what was that like? Like, what were the first couple days of guide dog class like? Crazy nerve-wracking. Just because I wasn't mentally prepared as I thought I was. And plus, it happened way sooner than I thought it was going to be. Because the last time we all spoke, I was still in my could-be-a-year-long wait that ended up only being four months. Mm-hmm. So I was super unprepared mentally yet. I was, But luckily, I came through it, and I feel good about it, and I'm glad I'm here. Yes, that is awesome. And I know um, I just talked to you a little bit ago about your experience so far with Loki. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit about, you know, how it started with some challenges and, and how you guys have worked through those little bit of challenges to get to, you know, this second week that you are here for guide dog training? Um, at first it was, it was like a very happy moment. You meet Loki for the first time and you just, you know, you almost want to jump up in the air because you're just so excited. <laughs> And then he's excited, and then you realize as soon as the instructor walks out of the room that he might not like you as much as you thought. (laughs) That's a good point. Because he loves Danielle so much. And then, so at first I had my doubts, and I was like, oh my gosh, he doesn't even like me. And then now we're just the best of buds, and it feels like it's one of the things we just do everything together now, literally. He's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no escaping at this I point. I can't get him off of my clothes either. Lint everywhere. Oh, or yeah. fur. Do you typically wear black? I wear a lot, and I have not. <laughs> you might have to redo your wardrobe yeah. at this point. I brought two pairs of black pants that I have not worn since I got Loki. <laughs> because there was one day I put them on, and he came up, and he, like, rubbed. He just walked against me and just, like, brushed against my leg, and there was hair everywhere just from that one little encounter. And I was like... Yeah. I can't imagine what a whole day of that would be. (laughs) So I'm not wearing those pants. So that is definitely a difference with a cane, like Leslie would say. Canes don't do that. Canes don't do that. (laughs) Honestly, sometimes people just have a preference on the dog uh, color based on, like, their wardrobe, Mm -hmm. right? So if you do wear a lot of black, sometimes people would prefer a black dog because you're wearing a, a suit or something like that all the time. So definitely something to consider. So you've been here now. This is week two. Usually week two, we say, is kind of the most stressful, right? That first week, it's, like, so exciting and new, and you're meeting Loki, and you're, and the bonding that's happening. Uh, tell us how week two has maybe been a little bit more challenging or a little different than week one. Week two has actually been better than the last week, and I think it's because me and Loki are finally kind of coming to an understanding of just kind of who he is and who I am, and he knows who I am now, and I know who he is now. 
not all the way, like it's only been what, a week and a half? Yeah. A little over. But I think I think we figured out each other. Like he knows what I like to do, my habits, I know what his habits are. And honestly, I think Loki's my perfect match. I don't think I can picture myself with another dog besides <laughs> yeah. Loki. Really, literally, honestly. And that's great to hear. And it's great to point out, too, that not everybody's experience is the same. Like Leslie yeah. has heard in the past that sometimes week two is more challenging. But for you, you're like, actually, we're bonding. So um, good well, to point out We have our little hiccups, too. but, yeah. I mean, that's just part of it. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to let it affect my mood or anything. Yes. You know. So you have about a little over a week left here. Just a smidge. Yes. Anything that you are looking forward to um, doing when you go home with Loki? Um, first thing we're doing, is, like I told you in the interview, <laughs> we're going to get a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> On the way home, not stopping at my house first or nothing. <laughs> going straight to the Mexican restaurant and getting a margarita. <laughs> Just to celebrate. Isn't that right, buddy? I love that. That's the perfect first goal <laughs> in outing. <laughs> and then... I think we're just going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Um, because there is so much work that you and all the other clients who are here are doing these oh, three yeah. weeks. So I'm sure when you go home, you just need to take a big, deep breath, it's take almost, a nap, relax for a little bit. It'll be almost like a, just a big weight off, but not like a bad weight. Like You're, you're glad you did it and, it, and, you, and it's necessary. But it's just, you know, you just... I don't really have, I haven't thought past what I want to do because I just am so ready to be home. Yeah. But not that I don't like it here. I love it here. I just miss my own pillows. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. It's it's hard being away from home for three weeks, and mm -hmm. it is stressful, right? Like, you're going through something new. You're meeting a whole new living thing that you have to, you know, bond with and work together as a team, and going home is going to bring its own challenges, but also... So exciting, right? To be right. in your own space, in your own environment, in which oh, you're yeah. comfortable in, and be able to take Loki out for the first time. What, uh, besides the margarita, maybe, <laughs> will be kind of that first destination or first route that you guys go on? I think we are just going to go to my local park and just walk around. That's actually one of my routes that I picked anyway. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just going to walk around and work on those distractions. People have a lot of dogs there, so I think it's perfect. And that's one of the only negative things as far as when we work together is he can get a little distracted sometimes. So my first goal is to go do that and work on those. Because, right, like here, you can work on them, but it's, this is nothing because it's where you take it home and you apply it to your life. It's where it makes the difference, you know. He already knows Michigan. <laughs> yes. This is all his territory. I'm the one learning it, you know. Mm -hmm. So... We got to take him out of his element and see what he can do and see what we're made of. Yes. Take him to Georgia, where it's a lot warmer, I'm sure. Dude, <laughs> you don't even want to know the humidity that we get. Yes. I know. That's so. You were here in February, and you really kind of had the whole spectrum of weather in these last just couple weeks. We went from, even just in a couple of days, we had 70-degree weather the other day, and then, like, 28 degrees two days later. It went from friggin' 60 degrees in the morning <laughs> till snowing in just a matter of hours yesterday. <laughs> And then I've today you would never know it. Today it's beautiful out. It's sunny again. It's going to be back up to the 60s it's this weekend. It's funny how you say that's beautiful out, but it's <laughs> yeah. freezing outside. So you're saying you don't want to move to the Midwest. No. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> I've gotten my taste of it, and I'm good. <laughs> yes. I don't know how people can live up here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, want, I think Timothy's not here, too. Yeah. definitely be outnumbered here on the, the Michigan talk. Yes. But, you know, I'm sure you've been allowing us to share your TikToks as well. Um, do you have anything planned for when you go home with Loki? I've got a few ideas already written down. I've actually got a couple scripts written already that I've just kind of stayed up in the bed, just making them. And uh, me and my fellow leader dog client, Joey, have some ideas of doing together with him and Tucker, but I'm not going to say nothing else or give it away. Oh, gosh. A little, little preview ideas. action here. Yeah. A little teaser. A little teaser. And we've had Joey on the podcast, too, mm -hmm. uh, and he shared his story, too. There's a lot of you in Georgia. You guys got yeah. a great little community going down there. You guys could stir up some trouble, right? I feel like. 
Joey's the world's nicest guy. Yeah. He's a good buddy of mine, and I don't know if I would have made it this far if he wasn't talking me through it almost every day that I've been here. That is so nice to hear, and it's something that we talk about a lot here is how a mentor or mentorship program or something would be so beneficial because who else better to learn from than somebody who has done it mm -hmm. and gone through it? And it is. It's an emotional roller coaster being here. It's hard work. You're away from home and, you know, lots of questioning about is this the right thing? Did I, What did I get myself into? And to hear from somebody who has gone through it and been successful or even not been successful, just to share their story and let you know that you're not alone and that, mm -hmm. you know, you know, this day will get better or tomorrow will get better. And it takes a long time truly to become a team. And then sometimes if you've never done that, it's maybe hard to imagine or picture getting out that far. So I'm so happy that you have that connection. I think it's something that we are uh, talking a lot about here on how we could potentially structure something a little bit more formal because not everybody has that connection. Right. I, I think it would be great. Um, fortunately for me, I do have someone like that. I don't know you know, how that is for my fellow classmates or not. Um, but I do think it would be beneficial. I do think that my stay here thus far has been pretty good. Um, like I said, I don't know how the average person is. You know, everyone's dogs are different. Everyone goes through different things, you know. But I, I feel like I'm a very tolerant person, so anything that, you know, frustrates me that, he, that Loki might do or might not do, I feel like I... I'm able to overcome it very easily, especially with having someone like Joey to mentor me through the whole thing. He says I give him way too much credit, <laughs> but I'm like, nah, it's all because of you, man. Oh, that's really cool. And I'm, Joey wrote a book. He um, did. And that he shared yes. with us and is one of my favorite things. Uh, that I have read. It's such a good, uh, I need to, we need to, I don't know the title off the top of my head because we can either. promote it right now. Yeah. We'll have to add that in somewhere. Yeah. Um, but it is a really good book that you can get on Amazon about his experience with both cane training and guide dog. And I mm -hmm. just, I learned a lot from it as well. I yes. believe there's a way to get a physical copy and an audio copy of it? Yes. yes. Right, okay. We have it here, too, I know, and available yeah. for clients. And then we have our own personal copies, which I treasure and love. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, one last question. Is there, you know, anything, talking about mentoring and stuff, that you'd say to a client who is on the fence about coming to get a guide dog while you're... Uh, to put it plain and simple, I don't think... Guide dog training is for the week, for sure. Yeah. So if you don't have, I want to say enough discipline because you learn just how much you need while you're here and that it ain't no easy task. But if you got what it takes, and I think everyone does have what it takes, even if they doubt themselves, but it definitely requires a lot of effort um, and discipline. And, you know, you just, I think a lot of mental fortitude and I would say, if you have all those things, this place is perfect for you. And even if you don't have all those things, you can probably gain it while you're here. You know? That is perfect. That's a great, that's great advice. I love it. Thank you so much, seriously, for taking the time out of your day. And like we know, is a very, very busy schedule being here. We wish you and Loki the most success and luck going back home. And of course, if you need anything, we are always here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And thank you to our listeners for listening to the Taking Lead podcast. I'm Leslie Haskins with host Christina Hepner. We hope you enjoyed hearing about Walker's leader dog experience. And please join us next time as we continue to dive into the world of blindness. And if you'd like to learn more about applying to our free services at Leader Dog, you can head to leaderdog.org or call us at 888-777-5332. And don't forget, you can reach us at taking the lead at leaderdog.org with any questions or ideas. If you like today's podcast, make sure to hit subscribe and check us out wherever podcasts stream.